Adidas has just reported a 19% jump in fourth quarter revenue led by sales in China and North America. Joining us from its headquarters in Herzogenaurach, Germany, is Kasper Rohrstadt, CEO of Adidas. Kasper, thanks for your time this morning. Uh, let me first ask about the, the China effect. It seems that sales are growing there at, a, at an incredible pace, I think 30% or more, and you're also growing margins there. Is China really what's behind this uh, positive outlook? No, if you look, we grew last year at 16% top line and 32% bottom line. It's an outstanding year. And the three main growth drivers were U.S., where we grew our Adidas brand 35%. China, we almost grew 30%. And our online business, we grew 57%. So it's those three components that really you know, drove the company forward to a record year. Uh, we are very profitable in China, and it is helping our profitability. But I also do want to say most of our marketing contracts on the large superstars are signed in Europe and in the U.S., and that makes then the Chinese marketing looks better than you know, it really is because, of course, they get the benefit from a Pogba or from a James Harden. So you've raised uh, some of your forecasts, Casper, including uh, the margins you expect in 2022, 11.5% from 11%. Why? Uh, what, what's making you more optimistic now than you already were? Is it signing bigger superstars? Is it the new tax uh, regime in the U.S.? I mean, w w what is it that's that's boosting your outlook for profitability? Mm. Mm. <clears throat> we took the margin up 200, uh, 210 basis points last year to a 9.8, and we are guiding between 10.3 and 10.5. And we just look upon the overall health of the business and the quality we have in our products and in our organization. And that's why we believe that would be the right thing to take the margin from 11 to 11.5 up you know, for the outlook of 2020, where we also took taking the overall profitability outlook up. So it's quality of products. It's strength in North America and China. It's our online business. And also our continued overproportional investment in the brand. So it's just continuing the very strong path we're on right now. And we're also using our balance sheet now, as I'm certain you've seen, and uh, yesterday night uh, launched a three billion share buyback program to make certain that uh, we use both the P&L and the balance sheet to create value for our shareholders. Yeah, good morning to you, Casper. We saw the big get the, the share buyback. Um, you've talked about success in, the, in China and in the United States. Not everybody in the U.S. market is experiencing that success right now. Uh, to what extent are other retailers giving heavy discounts or retailers giving heavy discounts? And what impact is, is that kind of environment having on, on your ability to do well in the U.S.? As you saw, we had an exceptionally strong growth of 35% in the U.S., where most of our competitors were negative in the U.S. last year. So I still think there's tremendous growth opportunity in the U.S. by introducing new products, new technologies like our new 3D printed shoe. But there's no doubt that you know, the competitive landscape in retail is strengthening, and it will impact overall the marketplace. But uh, we believe that uh, we still have a long way to go in the U.S., despite a very, very heavy promotional environment in the U.S. But you can see we took our margin up substantially in the U.S. from 17 to 18, and we also expect a margin jump also in the U.S. from 18, you know, from 17 to 18. And how is current trading doing, Casper? Of course, so the, the, this is a, a slight look back when we, when we get these numbers from you around mm. the past year. How is current trading in the United States doing? So if you look globally, we're guiding a 10% revenue growth for 2018 versus the number we came out with, which is 16 uh, in the previous year. So we are seeing a, a slight slowdown. We're seeing the predominant slowdown really coming from two markets, Europe and the Middle East. We're seeing the U.S. normalizing a bit. We're not seeing a major slowdown for our business in the U.S., and we still think we're going to have a very, very strong year in the U.S. for 2018. I ordered some uh, clothing from the U.S., Casper, the other day, picked it up here in Berlin, was, was surprised to find that I was slapped with a tariff by the EU of 12 percent. Obviously, yeah. Donald Trump has been talking a yeah. lot more about tariffs. Um, it's, it, it's interesting to see that there's so many goods already uh, under protectionist measures here. Obviously, the EU is thinking about responding to U.S. tariffs. W are you worried about that affecting your business? Of course, we look upon what's happening right now with the U.S. and the terrorist policy, but I think it's important to understand that the entire sporting goods industry is identically set up 
So all the larger manufacturers, so our competitors are all manufacturing in Asia, all bringing products from Asia back into Europe or in the US. So should a tax policy be applied to our industry, it will be equally applied to everybody. If you look upon the impact of our industry, it actually is fighting obesity, and by fighting obesity, we're getting health care bills down. So I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I don't think my opinion is, is asked. We're looking upon it, and we need to deal with it when it gets there. But it will you know, impact all to the same level. You mentioned uh, your online sales doing well. Where do you get most of your growth, Casper. I mean, you have individual stores, flagship stores in the big cities, uh, and you're selling at big box stores, obviously, around the world. Um, is, your, is your internet business becoming a substantial portion, though, of what you get, get out the door? So if we look about, we did 21 billion last year, and we, our internet business was 1.5, but growing 57%, and we aim to get at 4 billion internet business by 2020 of a total business of 25. So we're still getting a lot of very strong business from our great partners like Zalando, like JD Sports, the exporting good of Foot Locker. So they're still key partners of ours, but their business is also migrating to an internet-based internet -based business. So I would assume uh, that the overall part of the online trading of our business, including that of our partners, is probably between 25 and 30% of the entire market. Okay, Casper, just briefly, did the Reebok brand make a profit in 2017? And are you getting any closer to deciding on whether you keep it or sell it? So, as you know, we've decided to keep it, and that's the decision until we take a different one. Uh, we're getting very close to break even. We'll announce here this morning that we improved our profitability by 400 basis points last year. So, we took a major step forward in the profitability of the brand, and we also signed a great you know, co designer for our brand, Victoria Beckham, that will help bring out even more cooler products in 2018. So, in essence, we're very satisfied with the progress we're making on the Reebok brand. Okay.